World Cup races are fast, but how fast? It's easy to watch the fastest racers on your TV and think, wow, that looks really cool, but they can't be that fast, right? Not much faster than me. Well, today we're gonna to find out because we have one of the world's fastest racers. In fact, he was 2020's fastest downhill racer. Uh, the overall World Cup winner, Matt Walker, putting him up against a local legend amateur rider and a mountain bike beginner to see the real world time difference. Downhill races take place in all conditions. They don't get cancelled because of the weather. So you need to be a hardy human being. Uh, and today we're in sunny North Wales in the middle of winter and the conditions are gonna be pretty tough. And so is the track. The track is 2.4 kilometers long with a 314 meter drop. Starts out fast in the open with some rocky sections where you don't wanna make a mistake. Hit some nice big jumps and then drops into the woods for some dark technical rooty fun. Now to the contenders, starting with the pro Matt Walker, career highlights, downhill junior world champion and 2020 World Cup overall winner. Age 21, height 5 foot 10, weight 78 kilograms, other hobbies, motorbike track days. The amateur, Wilf Carey, aka Notorious Nutcase. Career highlights, helping to create Dovey Bike Park. Age just 16, but his height is six foot two and a half and weight 95 kilograms. Likes rugby and motocross. The beginner, Louis Belton, age 28, height five foot eight and a very svelte 65 kilograms. As you may tell, his other hobbies are road riding. There's the riders. Now it's time to get warmed up on the track, find the race lines, it's time for practice. There's a great example of line choice behind me that I feel like the sort of amateur boys may not notice because the main line is in this sort of rain rut you can see down here and it sucks you down over that log into a really big hole. I rode this earlier and I sort of jumped off it and there's a really big upslope slam into and I almost well, I did G out really badly and lost all my speed. I also think Matt will notice if you pull out of this rain rut a bit early, go high over that rock near my bike you basically cut out that big bomb hole, saves you hitting that impact and losing all your speed. And that's probably worth, I don't know, maybe a couple of seconds. I think it's difficult to, to explain that in one simple sentence. Like some tracks it'll take me a couple of runs, three runs to get up to speed. But then sometimes when you go to World Cups and the tracks are just longer, so it takes more time, more runs to, to kind of find where you're going. And also at a World Cup track, sometimes well quite often the lines change so I mean it can take a few runs to get up to speed initially but then as the lines develop over the weekend then you're always changing stuff so it can take sometimes all all the way up to Sunday morning before the race to kind of get your lines dialed before you go racing. Luckily, Louis only suffered a knock to his confidence and nothing else. But let's speak to the racers to find out their predictions. I've never been on a downhill bike before. I've never raced mountain biking. No, never raced downhill. Are you nervous about it? Uh, no, I think it will be quite fun, so. First, uh, first big race for 2021. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've done a few runs this morning. I've not actually ever been here before, so it's been nice to to ride my downhill bike, to be honest, and um, ride somewhere new. 
we've done four or five runs on the track and I'm really enjoying it. So uh, I think I've got all my lines dialed now. So looking forward to this afternoon. I prefer jumps and things to technical sort of things. So it's quite hard when it gets all tight, but it's all right. Weirdly, at the start of the day, I was less nervous, but after like four or five runs, I'm more nervous than I was before. Yeah, I, I've had some sketchy moments already, and uh, I feel like I'm probably maybe going a bit slower than I was to start with, but I mean, I haven't done the race run yet, so we'll, we'll find out how well I do. Do you think you're going to beat Louis? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think your chances are today? I think I've got a pretty good chance. I'm feeling quietly confident. <laughs> I think we were talking about this the other day, and I could be looking at like eight to ten minutes or something like that on the way down. I think Wilf will be within a minute, and Louis within three minutes. That's enough chat. When the gate drops, the bull <gasps> stops. Time to race. Louis is up first. I survived. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to stay up right more than anything because the last few times I crashed, but uh, got down in one piece. Time of 6.28. No way. Current leader. <laughs> How was the run? Tiring, definitely tiring. Good run? Yeah, I hope so. Any mistakes? Uh, I slipped it in one part, almost came off bad, but it, overall I saved it. Nice. Cold. Any mistakes? Good run? Yeah, it's quite a good one, really. For as, as much as I know the track, it's pretty good, I think. Yeah, quite happy with that. He does it! Well, of course he does. But it's a super impressive time, four minutes 23. Over a minute faster than the next competitor, and two minutes over our beginner mountain biker, Louis. Taking home the winnings, a Snickers bar, Matt Walker, his first big win of 2021. Now I know what some of you are probably thinking, Neil, why don't you do a time, put your money where your mouth is? But I thought I didn't really want to show Matt up. And you know, I did used to be a pro Daniel racer back in the day. 
to tell you about a time that I came second national champs and I would have won, but I slipped the pedal, and a time at the world champs when I crashed. So I'm to tell you about a time that I... Oof, I'm too old for this. I managed a four minutes 52, so 29 seconds slower than Matt. Yeah, not even close. But thanks to Matt, Wilf and Louis for being game for the race. Hit the thumbs up if you love this video.